Hi everybody, welcome. Today I'm going to talk about Project Gutenberg. This is a great resource for anybody interested in natural language processing, NLP, and that wants to work with um, you know, the great works of literature from around the world. Project Gutenberg has books uh, in a, a variety of languages, and I think the last count was around 50,000 of them available, uh, freely available to download and analyze. And the great part of it is it's all free and it's extremely easy to do in R, and that's what we're going to look at today. So as usual, in my walkthroughs, we're going to be going to um, all the code, all the text, a lot of the links are on my blog. So I'm going to have to github.io, go there, it should, it should also be on the bottom of your screen or in the description of the video. And we're going to click on um, this one here, Analyze Classic Works of Literature from Around the World with Project Gutenberg and R. So, um, so I already described what Project Gutenberg is, and the best way to know about it more is to actually go there, and in there you'll have a link to Project Gutenberg. Just click it, and here it is. So it's a simple site, and we are going to uh, look for uh, Shakespeare. We're going to actually we're going to download uh, the Tragedy of Romeo and Juliet. So I'm just going to go in the um, the search box and type Shakespeare. And you see there's quite a lot, right? Shakespeare is an extremely popular um, author. Uh, there are additional pages. But this kind of returns the, the books about Shakespeare, written, from, uh, writ written by Shakespeare, talking about Shakespeare, or having anything to do with, with Shakespeare's material. And we're going to click on the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet. So just click on it. And here it is. This kind of tells you the different formats in which you can uh, download um, uh, the book. So, you know, I know in Python there are great uh, packages to work with, uh, libraries to work with EPUB format, um, and we also have a plain text format, and that's what I'm going to work with, because like that you don't need any library or package, you have nothing to import. So, I clicked on the link, right, and as you see, the actual book, because it's actually a, a, oops, because it's actually a fairly short book, it, it appears, you know, you can easily view it in your, in your browser. And there it is, right? The entire play is there, and that's what we're going to download and bring into R. So it's very easy. So let me get um, things going here. So uh, we simply, you know, open an R session, right? I'm going to use a, um, R Studio here to work, and we're going to do a. Um, I'm going to create a variable, right? A Romeo and Juliet here, of which I'm going to simply call the read lines function. So that's a very simple function. And the function is smart enough that it can, you know, it can not only look for a path on your local hard drive, but it can also access the internet. So we're just going to paste it in. And that's it. That's very simple, right? I'm going to run this. And there we have it. And if I do a, a size, let's do a class first, see what, what, what we have here. A so it's a uh, character vector. And let's do, and let's check the size. And there, with a character vector made up of 4,853 lines. So these are not real sentences; these are just lines. Whatever the the, however it is broken to, uh, broken out here in the in this page, as you see, with the carriage return, and that's that's how it's broken down. So basically, we've got 4,853 uh, lines of uh, data that uh, represents the, uh, the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet. So again, just to, to recap here, right? I put Shakespeare in the search box, clicked on plain text UTF-8, uh, that's the format I want. And you can either click on it, see it in a browser, or you could simply, you know, uh, hit the copy link, right? Actually, I don't want to download it on my local machine, but you could hit and just go, you know, copy link address without opening it up and simply pasting it in here. It's exactly the same thing. There, well, slightly different actually. Let's see if this works. Let's do a length on it. Let's see, make sure we get the same thing. Yeah, we got exactly the same thing. So either either way works. Uh, it's simply getting the uh, the text inside of R. Very simple to do. So let's run some basic analysis on it, just so we can take it for take you know exercise it a little bit. Okay. So one thing you have to know about the text, and here if we go back here, let me open it up again. A lot of the, uh, uh, there's some text that prepends, editorial text that prepends the, the, the actual play, as you see. The play only starts right here. So all this is extra stuff that uh, the editor or, um, or uh, Project Gutenberg adds. And same thing at the end. We see that at the end we have 
a lot of warnings, uh, licensing issues, but it really ends right here. So to be to make this right, we're gonna sit, we're gonna we have to trim out all this uh, extra information at the beginning and at the end. We don't want it, right? We want we only want the real material, the the actual play, the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet, not any of the warnings or the introductions. So and that's something you have to check in every book because. Uh, sometimes you'll have introductions from you know, guest authors. Sometimes you'll have longer uh, license information. So you have to go there manually and figure out where it starts and ends. And that's what we're going to do here. So one way to find out where it starts or end is we could, for example, an easy way is to do a head on Romeo and Juliet here. And I'll do the first hundred lines. I mean, I, so, I happen to know this already, that this will get us to the beginning of the book. So, right? Title, author, all that information. And here it is. This is a good starting point right here. It could be 64, line 64, or line 66. It doesn't really matter. Um, you know, we're gonna, I'm going to go with 64. So now I know that the beginning of the book for me is 64. And same, you could do the same thing with the end, but as you saw, there's a lot more lines than uh, at the tail end. So I'm going to do something different. We're going to look for the end. Remember there was a, um, there was uh, the words the end there. So I'm going to look for, I'm going to use grep to find the end in our data file. Very simple function and it's going to return the index of where it's at. Okay, so 4,484. Okay, so let me pull that. Uh, so one easy way, right, would be to just kind of take what we already have and truncate it. We want to start at line 64 and we want to end at line 4484 let's do that oops let's run this and now if i do a head right we start at the beginning and if i do a tail we get the end right so there we're good we have the entire book saved in our uh, in our vector of characters that we call romeo underscore juliet okay so now let's um uh as you notice that the, the data here is lines, right? It's basically a vector of, of lines and they're arbitrary lines, right? They're not real lines. They don't stop at a point Well, some do, but some don't. So we need to kind of create a one big blog of the text. We're going to remove the, this arbitrary line system that, that read lines gave us. And we're going to create one big blog of text. And then we can, you know, break it up however we want by words, by real sentences, etc., etc. So one way to do that is to is to go, uh, you know, we're going to uh, we'll use the same name and I'll call it blob. And we're going to uh, use a paste command and simply say, you know, paste Romero and Juliet. And the separator is nothing, right? And we want to collapse everything by space. Whenever it encounters an end of line in our array, in our vector of sentences, it will collapse it using a space. Want. And it's going to give us one big blob. And if I do a length now, we get a big blob length one. And if I look at it, right, it's just going to scroll through the entire text. So as you see, if you wanted to, you know, have it very clean, you'd have to work on these extra spaces and there may be extra characters in here. But for our next exercise, this is going to work well. So now we have one big blog, right? One big blog of text. Let's, um, Let's do one thing here. We're going to remove all the punctuation. So here, let me make this bigger. So we're going to go, we're going to start looking at the words, only the words. So one way to look at the words is to remove all punctuation, right? We don't want this to be one word, right? Gold comma. We just want gold in this case. So we're going to use the G sub, the substitute command, and we're going to say take um, our Romeo and Juliet blob and use the pattern, this is a regex pattern, saying anything that's a punctuation and replace it instead with a space. So very simple. It will work fast. It's very efficient. And if we look at it again, now you're not going to see these commas or these periods, right? You removed all punctuation from our blob of text. And that's what we want. And now we can create a string of uh, 
um, we're going to create a, basically a vector of words. So instead of having here a, a one big blob, or like we had before, a vector of characters based on the new line character, now we're going to have a vector based on each word. So we're going to use a string split command, and that's going to say, you know, take everything in, in this blob and give a, you know, create a vector based on any time you find a space. And and if you look at it again now, we're going to have a lot of words, right, and a lot of blanks, and that's okay because what we want to do is fine for an exercise. But if you just wanted the actual words, you'd have to then remove all these uh, blank spaces, which actually we do at one point. So now we have a, a, a vector of words, right? What can we do with that? Well, one thing you can do is you can do some, some, some fun analysis. Like for example, how many times was the word Romeo mentioned in uh, Romeo and Juliet, right? That's a, that's a fair question. So one way we can do it, we can, do the, we can use the Greppel command. Greppel will return true-false if it finds what you're looking for, right? It's like grep, but it returns true-false. So let's say um, we're going to take Greppel on uh, Romeo and Juliet, right? And here we have to paraphrase it because we, we, we want uh, the actual uh, list of words. And um, we want the pattern. It's going to be, uh, we said Romeo, right? So Romeo. And as you see, we don't want to be bothered by uppercase, lowercase. So we're going to um, call a, um, I think it's here, right? Yeah, ignore case. We say true. Okay. So this is going to give us a sum of how many it finds that have, uh, how many times it finds the word Romeo in the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet. So it's mentioned 156 times. Interesting, right? So you know what I'm going to do next, of course, right? Yeah, I'm going to take the same thing and I'm going to replace it with Juliet. Let's see, you know, these are the two main characters of the play. And let's see how many times Juliet is mentioned. Wow, 66 times. So that's kind of interesting, right? Uh, it's about um, Romeo has been mentioned twice the, uh, than Juliet has. So maybe it's just, you know, uh, Juliet, you know, uh, yells the name Romeo a lot more than Romeo yells the name Juliet or, you know, whatever, right? So that's interesting, right? So that's the... I didn't want to do that. That's the kind of things that you can do with this list of words that we create for, for a book, is, is start asking these very simple questions that would be very hard to do if you didn't have a computer, right? It would be, be a nightmare to do by hand. So um, uh, that's interesting. So now we seem to have like a, 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 a male-female thing going. Let's find out how many times the word man is mentioned. So same, same code, and we're simply going to change Romeo to man. Oops, man right there. Let's see how many times the word man is mentioned. 176 times. And we'll do the same thing for a woman. Wow, right? That is a huge difference. Man has been mentioned 176 times, woman nine times. Well, of course, that's not entirely fair if you know how Greppel works. Greppel will look at anything, any pattern where it has the, 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 the letters man, even if it's composed in a word. So actually, these nine, um, uh, these nine findings of woman are counted in this one, right? Because woman here has man in it, and thus they're counted. So nine of these women are actually here. So the one way you can force it to only look for man as a word and not part of a word is using these uh, backslashes the you know the less than backslashes more than right so if you do it that way it will just look for the word man and not uh, not man part of another word and there we only find it 77 times and another thing you can do uh, with this greppel function which is pretty cool is you can look for multiple patterns at, at once and i'll just paste this one in here and so this time we're going to look for a woman 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 and lady and we'll ignore, ignore the case so with, if you use the pipe symbol, it says this or this or this, right? So it's going to give us a sum again. Oops, I forget the, the sum of how many it's found. Let's run this. 94 times, right? So it's very, you know, you, can't, you don't want to jump to conclusion. There's a lot of things going on. But it's definitely interesting analysis uh, to look at, you know, at this kind of, to be able to drill down to this type of level of, of uh, you know, of, uh, of accuracy with the num with the with the letters the words themselves right impossible to do without a computer or very hard I know people have done that but definitely not something I'd want to do okay so 
Now let's 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 look at something a little bit more complicated. I talked about the concept of uh, of recreating the actual sentences, and there are a lot I have in here. I have a bunch of resources, and there's this thing called sentence tokenizer. Let me find it here. So I think OpenNLP or NLP, one of these have uh, um, sentence tokenizers, which will uh, you know parse all your text and extract what they think is a good sentence. So we're gonna cheat, we're gonna create that ourselves, but uh, this will probably give you a lot more accurate uh, you know, view of what a sentence is. Sentence, you know, there's a lot of different ways of ending a sentence, right? Three points, one point, uh, exclamation point, question mark, et cetera, et cetera. You know, uh, three, question, uh, three interrogation um, uh, points, that means three exclamation points. So it gets quite complicated. So what we're gonna do here, I'll, I'll, I'll paste this as we go along, one by one. So. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our original. I'll put a separator here. We'll call this section sentences. We're going to go through. We're going to get another. We're going to create a new uh, vector of of the Romeo and Juliet, tra the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet, and we're going to call it sentences. And I'm going to. Use the, the, the pipe uh, pattern again to look for any uh, semicolon, uh, period, exclamation point, or interrogation mark. And when I find any of these, I'm going to replace it with a code. O-O-T-O-O. -O -O. I mean, it's arbitrary. It can be anything you want. You want to make sure it's not a word that it would not be considered a normal word. Otherwise, you'd lose it in the text. So I'm going to run this. And now if you look at it, you'll see it... Anytime it finds the end of a sentence, it's going to replace that punctuation with this code. And this allows us then to remove all punctuation. So a bit the same thing as we did before. So we're going to go uh, Romeo, Juliet, sentences. We're going to say remove all punctuation, right? Because now we know where the end, where, where a sentence ends because it has this code. So everything else we don't want. Let's just remove it. There. And we are going to um, go back. We're going to now remove all contiguous space like we had before. There were a bunch of, you know, double spaces, triple spaces. It's just going to make the code a lot cleaner. Again, GSUB, this time we're saying any space uh, that's more than one, right? We want removed. So, you know, a single space will keep, but anytime it's double, triple, etc., we bring it down to one single space. And we're now going to split every sentence using string split by our code that we created earlier, right? So now we're actually going to have a, a vector of true sentences, right? True sentence in, in terms of being split by one of these characters, a semicolon, period, exclamation point, interrogation mark, okay? And finally... There may be some empty elements, and that's what I was talking talking about, mentioning about earlier, right? When you have a, um, a vector, or an array, which has empty elements, then you can simply say, you know, give me everything, give me everything from uh, Romeo and Juliet sentences that does not have, you know, uh, that's not empty. That's not basically an empty cell. So, and that will, that will remove it. So now we have actual sentences. We can take a peek. I mean, it's not going to be perfect, and I think... Um, a sentence tokenizer will maybe do a better job, but you can see, right? This letter, blah, 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 blah to her death. And, blah, blah. and you can see it always starts with a capital letter, which is a good sign. That means we're kind of st we're, we're, we're starting our sentences correctly and we're probably ending them correctly uh, that, well, that, that way as well. So we're looking good. We got a bunch of sentences. And now, you know, we can simply say, you know, so how many sentences are in the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet? So very simple, right? You simply call the length command of Romeo and Juliet and you run it. And so we got, you know, 3,751 lines in the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet. So take it with a grain of salt. Uh, it may not be that precise and, uh, you know, uh, it's a play. So you'll have a lot of the, the character name being considered one sentence, right? Etc. So keep that in mind. Um, so that was it, right? That's all I wanted to show. Um, I think the, the, this resource, Project Gutenberg, for anybody interested in uh, analyzing the, the great works of literature from around the world, it's an invaluable resource. And as you saw, it's trivially easy to download and to, to, download and to work. Keep in mind that um, there, is, there are some limitations. There are some uh, 
uh, limits to how many times you can query it in a period of time. I have been throttled. I have been blocked at times. If you, you know, if, if it's uh, if you're excessive, so you know, don't abuse it. It's a resource for everybody, and we don't want you know we don't want them to change their policies and to you know make it a pay service or whatnot. So, I uh, hope you found this helpful.